everyone. And welcome to the session on the osteoarthritis. And I'll be also discussing a bit about some other arthritis uh, pertaining when we are discussing the osteoarthritis. Now, if you look at the orthopedic OPD statistics, one of the common case which comes to ortho OPD is osteoarthritis of the knee. This is one case which is also given very frequently to you in the examination. There are most of the colleges when we go to the question bank, you find that there are a lot of questions asked in form of short notes, um, clinical feature, management, radiology on the osteoarthritis. And when you look at the MCQs, which have been asked in last several years in various examinations, competitive examination, osteoarthritis is one of the common question. Beyond this, you are going to become intern. Some of you may join orthopedics, but a lot of you will go to medicine, surgery, and some other clinical branches where also these patients do present to you with a knee pain. So you need to have some clarity, what is this disease about? So how I'm going to take you in this journey for next one hour, we'll make it very interesting, very interactive. So I'm going to start with a case scenario and I'll then take you to how do we build up this case. In between, I will be, so let me just show you the presentation. In between, I would be starting the, the poll. You know, there is a, so we have got a, so I would request, I hope that all of you are watching my screen now. And uh, I would request all of you to download this app before we proceed from the Play Store. This is known as a Poll Everywhere. So it's a Poll Everywhere app, which you can download from Play Store. It's a very simple and a small app. Because this is how we are going to discuss the, the, the quizzes. And that's going to be very, very interesting. Most of the questions which I have taken up today are taken from the competitive exam or we usually ask in our own, you know, the vivas. So once you download this app, it will later, once you install this app, it, the window will be opening like this. It will say poll everywhere. Join presentation ev.com slash username and in place of slash username you will be putting Vivek Pandey 941 which you can see here as a username Vivek Pandey 941 and then you have to join you can skip most of this is you can straight away as I will be putting up the question it will open on your screen you can just click on your option and then in few moment we will see the results so without much ado let me start and welcome to this session on the arthritis So this is a, on the left side, you see a clinical picture of a old man who is 62 year old. He presents in the orthopedic OPD with pain in both knees since two years. Right knee was affected more than the left. Now, remember one thing, whenever we discuss pain in orthopedics, this is my one of the favorite thing which I discuss with the, my students, that pain in orthopedics must be uh, differentiated whether it is a mechanical pain or is it the pain at rest. What does it mean? Mechanical pain means the pain is mostly on loading. Like when you stand, squat, sit, cross leg, walk, jump, run, do any activity, it hurts. Whether it is the knee joint, ankle joint, hip joint, spine or any other part. Whereas there is something known as a rest pain. The meaning of rest pain is you don't need the activity. The pain will be there anyway. In fact, those conditions, the pain is more when the patient is at rest. So a resting pain or a pain with morning stiffness or a stiffness at night, which goes beyond, let's say, three to four weeks, is a sign of alarm in orthopedics. Yes, there are some exceptions. But generally speaking, anything which goes beyond three to four weeks and patient says, doc, I've got night pain. Uh, when I rest, it hurts more. When I get up in morning, my hands and feet are stiff. That's the time you should get alarmed and you should think, no, this is not a simple pain. This needs evaluation. 
So in fact, when I feel that the pain is felt more during the walking, squatting, sitting cross leg, I usually consider it as a mechanical pain and mechanical pains are a sign of degenerative condition like osteoarthritis, tendinopathies and so on and so forth. So they are not very alarming conditions. Now, further moving, when we asked, he said he has no morning stiffness, no night pain. There was no history of trauma and there's no history of constitutional symptoms, some such as fever, loss of weight and loss of appetite. So now I'm going to put up a poll and most of the time you will see this slide before I put up the poll. So if you are some of you are ready with the app, I'm going to put up the question before you. The next slide will be having the quiz. So are you ready? Let me put this. So that's your question. What is the possible clinical diagnosis in this patient? Rheumatoid arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, osteoarthritis, Rita's arthritis, none of the above. I'll disclose the result in about 20 seconds from now. Fantastic. So we have got 11 counts, 12, 14, 15. I'm sure this one is not very difficult for you to for you to understand because I've already given you a good background. But I'm going to ask you a certain question. Why not? This is this. 18, 19, we have got 87 participants. We need to have at least 45, 50. Okay, so since there's no more progress, let me see the response. Fantastic. So most of you have got the right answer. That is the, um, the osteoarthritis. Some of you have mentioned the ankylosing spondylitis. So we will discuss that why it is osteoarthritis and why not ankylosing spondylitis and why not it is rheumatoid and others. So any more people joining this? Okay. So now why osteoarthritis? The answer was right. The answer was osteoarthritis. And I'll tell you why. Because osteoarthritis, typically, if you see any joint, and we are talking about the primary osteoarthritis of the knee. Let me put you one more word. Now, osteoarthritis, when you use the word itis, in medical line, you feel that it is an inflammation. Uh, but typically speaking, in most of the primary of any joint, whether it is the shoulder, elbow, wrist, hand, spine, hip, knee, ankle or any other joint, primarily osteoarthritis is not a as gross inflammatory arthritis such as rheumatoid or others. It is actually, there can be sometimes a low grade inflammation. That's why it is known as osteoarthrosis. So don't get amused when you see this word osteoarthrosis. Okay. So whether you call it as osteoarthritis or osteoarthrosis, they are one and same. And many times in MCQs, we'll find the word osteoarthrosis. So don't be amused. It is same as osteoarthritis. Now, what is osteoarthritis? Osteoarthritis means it's a age-related, wear and tear-related damage to the cartilage. Remember one word. When we use the word arthritis, yeah, it kind of gives you a clue that it is probably an inflammation of the joint. Whatever it is, it is actually the it is actually a condition where the cartilage is getting damaged. Whether it is rheumatoid arthritis, Rita's arthritis, osteoarthritis, tubercular arthritis, post-traumatic osteoarthritis. Anytime when you use the word arthritis, you have kind of committed that it is a condition where the joint cartilage is damaged. So when we talk about the primary osteoarthritis, primary osteoarthritis happens about, you know, after several decades of life. It is not common to see a person who is in 30s and 40s to have a primary osteoarthritis of a joint. So if you see a, a osteoarthritis of a person, um, let's say he's 30s and 40s, always think why so early? This is not the time it should have. I'm talking about the primary osteoarthritis, not other uh, arthritis like rheumatoid or ankylosing, whatever. Okay, so that's one. So osteoarthritis typically of any joint will affect the older population. Two, usually the weight-bearing joints are more commonly involved. So knee, 
hip ankle more commonly shoulder and upper limb joints are relatively let's say after 20 to 30 years later than the low limb and their symptoms are usually mechanical now the question is if this is right then what went wrong with this why not this is rheumatoid why not this is rheumatoid and why not ankylosing spondylitis so let me put this poll And I'll get back to that slide. Most common complaint of a patient with zero negative arthropathy is knee pain with crepitus, hip pain, low back pain with stiffness, chronic neck pain, none of the above. It's because this slide is going to give you the one of the answers from the why not this. And these are fundamental things in orthopedics and often we find that even the my postgraduates and rarely my own registrars, they struggle, you know, making a, you know, a wrong diagnosis. A patient who has got the osteoarthritis, the diagnosis will be made as rheumatoid and or the ankylosing spondylitis and so on and so forth. So we need to have an absolute clarity what is osteoarthritis, what is rheumatoid arthritis and what is, you know, the uh, ankylosing spondylitis, reiters and so on and so forth. So we have only 18 results. I, I, I request all of you to download this app. It won't take much time. It's a very small app. The installation is very fast. So we've got 19 participants, 20, 21. So I don't see any quick progress anymore. So I'm going to lock this and then let's see the responses okay leave it open for some more time let's see the responses okay so there we go there we understand that we still are confused and that's the reason i want it to be clarified so let's go back to the slide now please understand if you classically see the osteo the arthritis Arthritis classically is divided in two parts. One is known as a zero positive and one is known as a zero negative. There are many ways of classifying an arthritis, but the one of the ways is zero positive and zero negative. What is the meaning of zero positive? Zero positive straight away means RA factor is positive. What is the meaning of zero negative? Means RA factor is negative. Please understand this. That's the first fundamental. The second thing is, one of the other way of classifying is zero negative spondyloarthropathy. What is the meaning of zero negative? Zero negative means these are the group of diseases or group of arthritis where the, the RA factor is negative, but they cause spondyloarthropathy means they affect predominantly the spine. And ankylosing spondylitis is the flagship disease of seronegative spondyloarthropathy. So they usually come back with the back pain, back pain, low back pain, stiffness, lumbar spine pain. So predominant involvement is of SI joint, lumbar spine, then dorsal spine. It keeps progressing. It goes to the cervical spine. It involves the chest. Sometimes it can come down. It can involve the hip and it can involve the knee joint. Rest of the peripheral joints like shoulder, elbow, wrist, hand, they're extremely uncommon. Okay. So before you see a patient who has got the, probably the ankylosing spondylitis of the knee joint, his hip and his hip spine would have been completely become a, like a bamboo. And the predominant complaint is back pain. They don't come to you with the knee pain. I mean, probably in 10, 15 years, you'll see one ankylosis of the knee joint. All right. So this is not ankylosing spondylitis because their typical complaint is always the back pain. Reiter's disease is also one of the seronegative spondyloarthropathy, where they have um, the triad. They have urethritis, arthritis, and conjunctivitis. And here I told you, patient does not have any constitutional symptom. So Reiter's is out of the question. Ankylosing spondylitis is out of the question because that is a disease of the young patients. You cannot diagnose an ankylosing spondylitis in a 62-year-old person who has presented you first time. That's a disease of usually a young people, let's say 20 to 50. Their predominant complaint is back pain, stiffness, early stiffness, pain more at rest rather than at activity. 
Rheumatoid, I'm sure that all of you know, this is not the way rheumatoid present. Rheumatoid is always the involvement of small joints of hand and foot. Now, why I'm bringing all this? Because um, in Viva, when you appear for final MB Viva, they'll usually ask you, why, why, why not it is rheumatoid arthritis? So you have to say rheumatoid does not classically involve bilateral knee joint. There, it's a classical disease of the bilateral symmetric arthritis of the hand and foot, small joints of hand and foot involving the wrist, MCP and PIP. There is something else in the knee I don't want to disclose, which goes against rheumatoid. We'll come to it later. So this we have done. Now, when we examined this patient clinically, we found that his gait was normal. The deformity, what you see is a genu varum. Genu means the knee is the referencing point and varum means in medical language, the varum means the part, this part has moved closer to the midline. If it was a genu valgum, you would have seen like this, right? So the students where they get confused is they think genu varum means the genu, that is the knee should come closer. No, genu is the reference point. Right. So when you say genu varum means genu is the referencing, that is the knee. Varum means the leg. The leg has come closer. So if you carefully see, if I rub all this, this is the referencing point, that is the genu. The distal part has come closer to the midline. Okay. So this is the meaning of genu varum. And genu varum is the classic deformity in the osteoarthritis of the knee. The joint line, his joint line was tender. And when we move the joint a couple of times we felt that there was a crackling noise we call it as a crepitus and the range of motion was limited about 110 normally in a knee joint it's about it's about 120 to 30 degree now remember whichever joint you examine whichever joint you examine if you consider arthritis usually there are three features one or more there has to be a joint line tenderness Usually there's a crepitus because the surface of the joint has become rough. See, joint surface will have a cartilage. Now, as I told you in the beginning, what is arthritis? Loss of cartilage. When the two sides cartilage is lost, when you rub, it makes a noise. Krr, krr, that, that kind of noise will felt. That's known as a crepitus. And they have a restricted range of motion because of arthritis, because of synovitis, capsular contracture, osteophyte, and so on and so forth. So uh, whether you are examining an osteoarthritis of shoulder joint, elbow joint, wrist joint, hip joint, knee joint, ankle joint, the basic features are same. And that fundamental is applicable for you and for me either. It doesn't change. As a consultant, my diagnosis remains the same. Now, I'm going to show you one video. How do we actually examine the joint line in the knee? Because it's a very standard question in exam. Show me how do you palpate the joint line? So... Patient is supine, kept supine, where the knee is flexed to 90 degree. You palpate the tubal tuberosity and move the thumb upwards, adjacent to patellar ligament, till it dips into the soft spot, and then palpate median laterally. So just let me run the video. There's all actually these videos. If you are having my book, Musculoskeletal Examination, the recent edition, all videos of almost all joint examination, including gait, peripheral nerves, everything is bundled with the book. So you see, I'm examining the left side first. Patient is supine. You flex the knee. Palpate the tubal tuberosity. My index fingers over the tubal tuberosity. And then you go a bit on the sidewards. Move proximally till you dip into the soft spot. You can see my thumb is in soft spot. And then palpate on the medial side here and the lateral side on this side to get the to get an idea of the joint line. What is the meaning of joint line? Basically, joint line means where the two surfaces are meeting. So if you consider this as the femur and this as tibia, so where the tibia and femur are meeting, that's, you know, this little slit you see is the joint line. Why it is tender? Because cartilage is damaged. Okay, so this is one of the sensitive signs, signs not the specific sign. So that's how, again, you palpate the medial joint line. In exam, is it is often asked, and that's how you palpate the lateral joint line. Okay, so now we go to the, there's another condition, you know, sometimes because of the 
a little excess fluid, some synovitis, some inflammation, some low grade inflammation, there may be some amount of effusion or a fluid. So the knee joint examination is big, but for this particular case, we have kept these only two tests. Crepitus is simple. You keep the hand over the knee joint, move it a couple of times and you can feel a grating sensation under your hand. So how do we do the patellar tap? So patellar tap is usually done in the supine position with the knee extended. And I'll show you the test straight away rather than. So in the book, actually, uh, you have a full slide, which actually where I speak and I tell you how we have done this test. And then you can actually watch the test because here I'm there to speak, but not in the book. So this is how you can see very carefully that this knee has got effusion. If you carefully see, this is the classic effusion, which we call it as a horseshoe shaped swelling. This is the outline or silhouette of the patella. This is how the full suprapatellar pouch is swollen here. So that's the outline of the swelling and we call it as a horseshoe shaped swelling, right? And then what we do is we are just palpating patella. Now we squeeze the fluid from the suprapatellar pouch downwards and then use the finger to push it down like this. As the patella goes down, it hits the trochlea because you have the femoral trochlea down. It hits and comes back, goes down and comes back. That's known as a patellar tap. It is almost like if you remember the renal ballotment, something like that. Some tests for an undergraduate are important. So that's why I have shown you. Now, sometimes the synovium which is lining the knee joint, maybe hypertrophy. So how do we do that? I'll just show you, sorry. So sinal hypertrophy is palpated medial to the medial border of patella. So this is the left knee. That's the lower pole of patella. That's whole outline of patella. That's superior, lateral. This is medial. That's where you palpate, just medial to the medial border of patella with the pulp of your finger. Don't poke the fingers like this. Okay. You use the pulp like this and then palpate. You can palpate the thickened synovium against the medial femoral condyle. That's how you palpate the synovium. So some tests which are relevant. Now there's going to be a poll. So be ready and let's see what questions are we going to ask. Okay. When you see this deformity in the knee, What's the likely diagnosis? Osteoarthritis of the knee, rheumatoid, enclosing spondylitis, or inflammatory arthritis, like rheumatoid, SLE. Inflammatory means rheumatoid, SLE, reiters, or for that matter, occasionally tuberculosis. So let's see. This is a bit catchy question. This is very often asked in AIMS. In fact, I we do follow this. When we see genuarum, we know what is it. When we see this deformity, we know that this is something different. So please go ahead. Anyway, this poll, are, these polls are completely anonymous. I don't know who's polling what. I don't have any access to anything. So please enjoy the polling. These polls are completely anonymous. I just get the total number of results, not the name, not the mobile number, not the phone number, not email, nothing. We need more participation. Feel free. Okay. This is how the AIMS MCQ or, you know, the high level need. And remember, there's nothing like high level MCQ. Most of the MCQs, the clinical MCQs, if you see 80, 25% questions are actually simple. If you have been in clinic, if you have been discuss, enjoying the clinical discussion, it's easy. Because if I'm framing the question, because people like us only frame, if I'm framing the question, I'll frame what I'm seeing normally in the clinic. That's why only 10 to 15% questions are difficult. 80% questions are actually normal questions, very simple questions. Okay, so let's see the response. Okay, osteoarthritis, 23% rheum rheumatoid, 12% in colorizing spondylitis, and 27% inflammatory arthritis. Okay, so now let me tell you straight away. Whenever you see, it's a golden rule in orthopedics. When you see a varum deformity, which you saw last time, like, okay, it will not run on this, my pen. If you see a varum deformity, 
take it as osteoarthritis. If you see a valgus deformity, now this knee, this knee, if you see the right knee, my pen will not work on this. If you see the right knee in this slide, it is in valgus. The point at the, the part that is leg has moved away from midline. When you see a valgus deformity, always rule out an inflammatory arthritis. That is the golden rule. Okay. So here the right answer will be inflammatory. Rheumatoid is also correct. But since one of the option is inflammatory arthritis, which encompasses the in rheumatoid arthritis, I would bet on inflammatory. Osteoarthritis, I would not bet. Uh, if I have to just, you know, look at the MCQ point of view, unless I see the question, because the valgus deformity is not common in osteoarthritis. Now, nobody will ever ask a question on ankylosing spondylitis, putting a picture of the knee joint. Then I have to put a picture of spine, a stooping posture or something in the x-ray. Okay. So let's move on. So please remember this fundamental fact. And this fact is as important for the consultant as for as UG. Genuvarum is the primary, is a common deformity in the primary degenerative osteoarthritis of the knee, where you can see the picture. Whereas the genuvalgum like this, is usually common in inflammatory arthritis. So if I see a man or a woman with a valgus deformity, where the legs are pointing outwards, I will rule out an inflammatory arthritis. I will not take it as osteoarthritis unless I know with the history and examination that this is not osteoarthritis. So that's a very important fact. Many MCQs are asked because there are some features in X-ray also which you can actually discern. Okay, now once we have the history, once we have the examination finding, we know now with the case what I started that this was osteoarthritis. So how do I confirm the diagnosis? I mean, how do I proceed? Now, when it comes to Viva, please understand all of you, those who are watching. Even I had this habit and I know that many of you have this habit. You say routine investigation. Please understand there is no such word like routine investigation. All investigation in medical science are done with a rationale. You might be doing it to support the diagnosis. You might be doing it to confirm the diagnosis. You might be doing it to work up the patient for theater. I mean, if you're planning to operate, right? But there is no investigation such as routine investigation. Like if I say, what do you want to do? I will do CBP, ESR, CRP. Why? Why in a patient in osteoarthritis want to do CBP, ESR and CRP when it is a non-inflammatory condition? Yes, if you have, let's say the same case, which I showed you. And if I would have said that the patient also says that my doc, my wrist and hand are a bit stiff in morning. And even in the knee, I feel a bit stiff in morning. Then I will say, okay, let me also rule out rheumatoid, which is an inflammatory disorder. And in such case, I will do ESR and CRP not in primary osteoarthritis. So please understand, do not use this word ever to say, I would do routine investigation. There is no routine investigation. Every investigation has a rationale. Let's come to the point. So what do we do in this? Now, one, we have to do confirm the diagnosis. Our provisional diagnosis was osteoarthritis. Two, we have to rule out any other diagnosis or other pathology if it is in the mind, okay? And other investigation. So, which is the investigation which is confirmatory for arthritis? Somebody can put up in the chat box. Let me see. Which is the investigation which is? And the questions what you have put in the chat box, I'll, and I'll answer you later. Which is the investigation which is confirmatory for an arthritis anywhere across the body, across the joint? Fantastic. So Vinay has written X-ray. Sokat has written X-ray. Fantastic. No, arthroscopy is arthroscopy is the last investigation. Okay, X-ray, rheumatoid. If you are thinking about rheumatoid, so largely I can understand that most of you understand that it's the X-ray. Okay, because why X-ray? Because in the X-ray, normally, okay, let, let me come back to the let me come to the the X-rays. Okay. Now look at this. What do we see? We see a plain X-ray of the knee joint, both the knee joints, right? On top, you have a tibia. Down is, sorry, I'm so sorry. Top is the femur. Down is the tibia. This is the medial femoral condyle. This is the lateral femoral condyle. This is the medial tibial plateau. This is the lateral tibial plateau. This is fibula, right? 
I have marked here, but we'll focus on the left X-ray. These are the tibial spines. You see this like Mount Everest, like two peaks here. They are known as a tibial spines. We have a medial tibial spine and a lateral tibial spine. Now focus on the left side. So what do we see? This is known as a joint space, right? Why there's a space? Do we have air, gas, water, sinal fluid? Write in the chat box, why do we see the joint space? Brilliant. Okay. So most of you have started writing cartilage. Some of you have written meniscus. Some of you have written sinal fluid. Okay. If my internet connection, my internet connection seems to be quite good. If it is a trouble, Navdi, please let me know. Because it is on a very fast broadband, not the routine Airtel or anything. No, sir, okay. your, internet, your internet is good. Uh, one of the students asked that the slides are not moving. So I just asked him to check his internet connection. Okay, okay, fine, fine. No, no, I am on the one of the fastest internet at my home. Okay, so, so brilliant. So most of you have written cartilage. Please understand the space between the bones. Okay, now whether it is on right X-ray or left X-ray. Okay, please understand it is the cartilage. It is the cartilage which makes the space. Okay, not the sinal fluid, not the menisca. Yeah, they do contribute a little bit here and there. But please understand any joint what you see, whether it is the hip joint, knee joint, ankle joint, any joint, if you see a space between the two bones, that's always because of cartilage. And what did we start saying that what's an arthritis? Arthritis is destruction of cartilage. So when the cartilage gets destroyed, you are going to see the narrowing of the joint space. So now look at this. You have the medial joint space narrowing. The two bones are hitting each other. They are kissing each other. Okay. Whereas lateral joint is kind of open. So this is the most classical feature in an osteoarthritis of any joint and whether it is the rheumatoid etiology, whether it is the um, reters, whether it is osteoarthritis, whether it is tubercular, any etiology, when it causes the arthritis, it actually causes damage to the cartilage. So what do you expect to see in the x-ray is the reduction in the joint space. That's the fundamental rule in orthopedics. Okay. Now, again, if you go back to this, you look at this picture, this picture, I, I, I think I should have superimposed it there, where there's a varum of the knee joint. And now look at this x-ray. This is also in varum, right? So that matches with my assumption, right? When you see asymmetric, now you see there's an asymmetry. There's a more medial joint space reduction because as you stand actually in osteoarthritis of the knee, now there's more weight from the hip joint on top falling towards the medial side rather than lateral. That's why in the osteoarthritis of the knee, there's more medial joint space reduction than the lateral. That's the golden rule. Okay. And diagnosis is usually confirmed with the x-rays. MRIs we do when we have a doubt of meniscal tear or some other lesion in my mind than I do. Normally, typically MRIs are not done for osteoarthritis. I want to see some other findings like meniscus, cartilage flaps or some other, then we do. But that's not a typical UG level question. Okay. Be ready for the poll. So pick up your phone. Be ready. I'm going to flash the question. So I, I think now with this discussion, I don't think you have any confusion. You have to answer this. Most common radiological finding in an arthritic joint of any etiology will be this osteophyte, deformity, joint space reduction or a subchondral cyst. At least 30 people should answer. Last time it's approached till 26. Now we need at least 30 people. And this is very simple. If you have been just listening to me, you can actually get the right answer. Yeah, in the advanced case, you will see all. But what is the, the most important feature you should get? So if you have understood the pathology, you will be able to answer this. Once I cross 30, I'll stop. Okay, so 29, I'm stuck at 29. One more, 30. Fantastic. So let's see the response. Brilliant. So most of you have got it right, the joint space reduction. And why? Because I told you the pathology. The pathology is the destruction of cartilage. When the cartilage is gone, joint space will be reduced. 
Yes, deformities do happen. Yes, osteophytes do happen, but they are not seen in all arthritis at all stages. Okay, so in not all cases you will find, but most of the time you'll find the joint space reduction. Subchondral cyst is also seen, but in advanced cases. Okay, so that answer is not wrong. But if you see, you have to pick up the question, you know, sometimes. Okay, most common. Okay, so most common is joint space reduction. Okay, so now let's move on. So you can see here, the joint space is reduced. This like a bird beak, you know, this is what, what you see here. That's an osteophyte. Again, I'll just point out, you see this little thing here projecting outwards. That's an osteophyte. Okay. And you can see the bones are getting kind of little deformed. So there's a deformity. Then subchondral cyst means below the cartilage, there are some cystic changes. Not every time you'll find, you'll find some small, small cysts here. Those are subchondral cyst. And this is known as a subchondral sclerosis, means the bone below the cartilage becomes thickened. You see this little whitish area here? That's known as a subchondral sclerosis. Okay. But again, if, in all arthritis, you'll always find the, the, the joint space reduction. If you know this much as a as an MBBS doctor, I, I think this is more than enough. Let's go for one more poll. Be ready, guys. Okay, so here is the question. Image A represents rheumatoid arthritis while image B represents osteoarthritis. This is tricky. You have to use your comments. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you can pick up. I'll give you a clue. Image A has got asymmetric joint space reduction. The more medial side is reduced. Whereas image B has got a uniform reduction in joint space means whatever is the disease, it is uniformly affecting the joint. Medial, lateral, everywhere. Now pick up your answer. And these things are important. When I see an x-ray and sometimes my PGs will admit a case and they say, sir, we have admitted an osteoarthritis. So, okay, show me the x-ray. You see the x-ray, you see a uniform reduction. And then you say, okay, okay. So I've given you enough clue. I'm sure you can pick up the right answer. Again, I've seen a couple of the picture MCQs in the AIMS and the, you know, the so-called high level MCQ. There's nothing like high level, but they all depend, you know, if you have been following clinics, you can crack this. Okay, so let's see the response. Okay, fantastic. So most of you have got it right. This is a false statement because Actually, image B, image B is rheumatoid arthritis. Why? Why? As I told you, in osteoarthritis, in osteoarthritis, usually there is an asymmetric joint space reduction. Because it, especially in the lower limb, because it depends where the weight of the body is falling. And weight of the body doesn't fall exactly in one place, especially in the knee. It is more towards the medial side. So there is more medial joint space reduction. Okay, here. Whereas in rheumatoid, it's a throughout disease. It's a disease which affects medial compartment of the knee, lateral compartment of the knee, patellofemoral everywhere. So you see a symmetric joint space reduction. You see both sides are reduced. So when they put up a MCQ or you are seeing a patient in clinics with a symmetric joint space reduction, ensure that you do always rule out an inflammatory arthropathy or maybe sometimes tuberculosis like infections. Okay, because infections will not say, okay, I will be only here and not there. It is going to destroy the entire joint. Okay, so infections and inflammatory arthropathies usually have a uniform reduction in the joint space. Whereas in the osteoarthritis, it's a more of an asymmetric joint space reduction. Okay, so now we move on to the next. So this we have understood now. You have no confusion. Now from the history. We picked up a few points. That means it is usually the weight bearing joint which is involved and the symptoms are mechanical and these patients are older. One more thing probably I should have said uh, that these patients who are having the weight bearing joint involvement, they are usually obese. I mean, they can be obese, not usually obese, but they can be obese. So you must always look at their body habitus, whether they are obese. Okay. Obesity is one of the major factors which can predispose a patient for premature osteoarthritis. All right. Examination wise, they will have a varum deformity, not necessarily, but that's a classical medial joint line tenderness. 
crepitus and joint space reduction. Sorry, uh, the range of motion is reduced. The classic investigation in osteoarthritis of any joint is always an X-ray. Rest of the investigations are supportive or you want to have something else in your mind you want to rule out. Now let's do the management. Now guys, I'm not going into the details of management. You have books, you have all wherewithals with you, you can read. I am going to give you a different perspective. When you people write an answer in exam, most of the answers, or you can say 90% answers are haphazard. There is no system. What is the first point? What is the second? And what is third and fourth? I'll tell you roughly in orthopedics, you can always uh, classify your answer in five points. You see, I've written four only, but you can say five points. General measures, any physiotherapy measures, orthosis means something like belt, braces, crutches, walkers. They're all orthosis means supportive measures. What is the medical measure I'm going to do and what is the surgical measure? If you classify your especially a long answer or let's say a short note of four marks in this phase, it becomes very easy for you to think. Otherwise, first point is surgical, second point is medical, third point is physiotherapy, fourth point is surgical, fifth point is something else and you are confused and everybody is confused. So general measures mean it is not a medical measure like you say activity modification okay patient says sir when i squat i get pain okay ask him to avoid squatting one of the funniest answer we often read in the orthopedic the answer sheet is ask patient not to walk are by when you start flying so don't try something which is seemingly impossible okay so you have to say okay avoid squatting or minimize squatting but you can't tell a person not to walk that's stupid if he'll not walk his weight will go up okay these are general measures. Physiotherapy, like we send the patient for three things. One is pain relieving physio anywhere. And this fundamental you can apply anywhere because in Viva, sometimes you're stuck. They'll ask you, what is physiotherapy? So there are three aspects which a UG should know. Pain relieving physiotherapy, muscle strengthening, muscle strengthening and joint mobilizations. These are two, three important things. Okay. So pain relieving physiotherapy is done by various measures like moist heat, short wave diathermy, interferential therapy, TENS, ultrasound and whatever. In Manipal Manual, if you see that one of the last uh, chapter has got this little description of physiotherapy, what we exactly do. Muscle strengthening exercises because you have to strengthen the muscle and how do they work? Would they work? Because if you strengthen the muscle, they take away the little load from the bad joint. Okay, and then the mobilization means you get back the range of motion and strength. Medical, there are many medical measures in in the in um, in osteoarthritis. I will not disclose anything now. Let's have some uh, quizzes and then come back to this slide. Okay, so let's have a quiz. Which of the following is not used in the treatment of osteoarthritis of the knee? Here are your five options. I'll not disclose any anything. We'll come back later and discuss these are the possible things which we should do or not. Quick, which is never advocated. Now these MCQs are kind of a rule out. You don't have, you have to use too much of brain. You may not know one or two options, but you know, this is impossible. This should not be used. So we have reached 24, 25 responses. 26. Once we breach the bar of 30, maybe we will stop. Okay, some of you are writing. I, I don't know. Maybe you have not. Uh, so please gear up when next time I am on the, the webinar, which we'll be conducting very frequently now. We will, uh, you have to download this app and work with this app. Okay, so some of you are writing unloader brace, um, high TB lost your me. Okay. So I think I'm not going to breach the that. Okay, right. So let's let's check the let's stop this and see the responses. 
Okay, so <laughs> all right. So most of you have got the right answer, and you said methotrexate. Uh, let me tell you, methotrexate is a disease-modifying anti-rheumatoid drug. Classically, methotrexate is an anti-cancer agent. It is also used for the various malignancies. Uh, it is also used in osteosarcoma. But classically, if you look at the arthritis, it is never, ever, ever, ever used in osteoarthritis. Okay, it is a drug of choice for rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so methotrexate is the answer which is not used. Unloader braces, yes. I would ask you to take a screenshot of this, what we are doing this, and put up on the Google unloader brace for osteoarthritis. I'll explain you sometime later if we have, have time left because we are just have about 10 more minutes. Unloader braces are used. If you read my book, it does describe. If you watch my lectures, I have described what is an unloader brace. High tibial osteotomy is done. Diacerin is actually one of the disease modifying agents for osteoarthritis. Okay, that's a, one of the MCQs. Platelet rich plasma and stem cells are coming up off late. They have been used. So if you see a lot of studies, especially from PGH Chandigarh, Dr. Mandeep Dillo and others have done. PRP is one of the armamentarium for osteoarthritis when it first fails the baseline conservative management. Okay, now let's go to the one more MCQ. So two MCQs back to back. More, one more is there afterwards. A 45 year old male laborer is suffering from moderate osteoarthritis of knee of medial compartment. Forget the this moderate and all. Medical management has not given him enough relief. Okay, what's the next step? Arthroscopic debridement, unicompartment replacement, total knee replacement, high tibial osteotomy, arthrodesis. Now, this was, I think, one of the MCQ. I mean, it's not that I have copied from somewhere, but I read it sometime that there are MCQs of this level also asked. So let's see. Here, each word is important. His age, occupation, what's the kind of osteoarthritis patient is having. Uh, medical management is not done enough. What's the next best step? It's not easy um, <clears throat> because you are not a treating consultant. Most of you, some of you, I have, I saw that they are physiotherapists. Fair enough, no problem. But just have a have idea. I'll tell you what is the best option. So some are writing total knee, high table osteotomy, arthroscopy, like usual, mixed answers. We are stuck at the somewhere around 26 to 30. So next time I would request most of you who are joining. Um, okay, somebody wrote Akash. Unicompartment uh, osteo, unicompartment replacement. Okay. Arthrodesis. Okay. Total knee. Okay. Right. And we have 29 results. Once I get 30, I'll stop. Okay, one more to go. A arthroscopy. Okay. Mahesh, okay. All right, let me stop because I don't see much because some of you probably do not have the poll. A, okay, now the answer is, I'll tell you later. Okay, so most of you have selected unicompartment replacement uh, followed by arthroscopy and uh, arthrodesis is very few. Okay, now the right answer is high tibial osteotomy. Okay, you must read this, high tibial osteotomy. Why? I'll tell you what not others. Arthroscopic debridement is a procedure which is not frequently performed. We do only when we know what exactly I need to debride. Sometimes there are cartilage flaps or meniscal roots which are torn. But that question I have not framed for you and that I don't think that you have got that much of idea. So I didn't put up that, you know, in your mind. So arthroscopy is out. Now, arthrodesis in modern orthopedics is not a great option for a a knee or a, or a condition which is very well treatable. Arthrodesis means you fuse a joint. You completely fuse. Now, what's the advantage? No pain, no movement, no pain. But he has no movement. Now, carrying out his life will be very difficult with a fused, completely fused joint. Okay, just imagine your leg is straight. It's not moving. How are you going to work? How are you going to sit on a chair? How are you going to sit on a you know, ground? He's a laborer. Uni compartment replacement. Now, uni or total are offered. Total is usually offered for all you people. It is usually offered in 60 plus older population. 
okay <clears throat> he's a laborer he is going to go to the field his manual work he's going to overuse and abuse his joint if you do the total knee it can result in a very faster wear of the prosthesis and same is the true for the uni compartment replacement so uni can be offered in a let's say a person is about 55 he is an office goer and he um, let's say doesn't use his joint much right let's say a soft software engineer or just a ceo of a company who's okay their uni can be can be actually justified but looking at this question scenario a laborer who's going to use his joint a lot high tb loss taught me what does it do it you saw the you saw the x-rays, they were like this, varus, right? So there was more weight coming through the medial compartment. In high table osteotomy, you cut the bone and make it straight in such a fashion that the weight is now shifted to the lateral side. If you watch my lectures, I have explained it very well there. So you are now using the, the normal or lesser damaged lateral side. Okay. So you're shifting the weight bearing axis to the lateral side, right? And that gives about... 10 to 15 years to the patient uses normal knee joint and now he's 45. So let's say with the high table osteotomy, he goes till 60. At 60, you replace. Okay. Why not replacement at 45? Because if you replace at 45, the between the two metals, there's something known as a poly, poly, polyethylene that wears off. And then he'll be too early for a replacement. Right. So for all practical purpose, for an MBBS grad, remember high TB loss taught me is a good option, is one of the best options. Today is one of the, it's coming up in orthopedics like anything. It's one of the best option in middle age from 40 to let's say 55, maybe sometimes up to 60 also we have done, okay, with mild to moderate osteoarthritis where you don't want to do replacement, okay. I think there's one more MCQ. Yes. Now, I think with our previous discussion, I don't think you are going to get confused with this. This you should not miss. You can go ahead because I have already mentioned. <clears throat> okay, now I can see more right answers in the chat box because some of you are not using the... Okay, so... Some of you are not using this poll everywhere. Good. So I see now more and more right answers. So let me now just uh, stop this and see the responses. So fantastic. Uh, total knee replacement is the right answer. Arthrodesis, you have understood. We don't do hugely the arthrodesis. Braces, yes, if you don't want to operate. Okay. So if the question was, what is the best possible treatment for a os severe osteoarthritis in a 65-year-old male who is severely morbid and unex you know unfit for surgery? Brace is a good answer, okay? Because there you have to offer something non-operative. High table osteotomy in a 65-year-old male in severe, no. Moderate, yes. So that's the catch, okay? So that's how, and I have not put a UK, uh, that is uni compartment replacement. Again, in severe, OA, no. Severe means all compartment, medial, lateral, and patellofemoral are involved. All right. So with this, I stop this because we are just on time and I'll go back to the this one. <clears throat> so please remember this slide management of OA, right? Um, so we just discussed general physio orthosis, medical management. Typically, you give some analgesics. Uh, avoid using these words painkillers okay if you use the word nsa then you are very focused on one group of you know analgesics so you just say analgesics which is a very broad term um there are some drugs like um chondritin sulfate glucosamine which are given they have a very doubtful value but people do give diacetin i told you there are some injections like hyaluronic acid injection uh, which gives a temporary relief of about three to six months because it increases the viscosity PRP injection and stem cells. We in Manipal, we have done a very big series for last 10 years using the stem cells. The It's it's a good one, but I, I don't think we have yet cracked the formula. The surgical options are, and then braces. You know, orthosis means braces. So you have to go and read the unloader brace. Surgical options are, typically you can do scopic debridement in a very mild osteoarthritis when we have a, some, uh, you know, cartilage flaps or meniscal tear. 
then we have high tibial osteotomy. So please remember high tibial osteotomy in an osteoarthritic knee is for the moderate osteoarthritis, one compartment in a younger demanding patients. Okay. Unicompartment replacement in a, when the single, uh, let's say this one. Yeah. So you have only this joint involved. This is okay. But the patient is, let's say 50 to 55 and he has got lesser demand. He's not a manual laborer. Let's say he's a software engineer who's not into any hard, hard working. Okay. Or a, a, a doctor also who is not into much of running around. He's mostly the sitting around, sitting job. Okay. You can plan for this. Totally replacement for a severe osteoarthritis. Okay. Arthro disease is an option, but usually we don't use it in, in primary osteoarthritis of the knee. So with this, I stop here. Um, and thank you for all your attention. These are my two books. The lower one, Manipal Practical Orthopedics is an excellent book for the Viva Bose. Okay. And the questions, what they ask in Viva, the cases, what you get. It is also a kind of an amalgamation of what you read in theory. So I am open for any questions and um, discussions. Visco supplementation, yes, Mukul, uh, what you have written. Visco supplementation is nothing else but the hyaluronic acid. Okay, let me just go through some questions. Um, anything you have to ask, you can always ask now. Any questions you can put up in the chat box. We are open for next five minutes so that we can just discuss. Yeah, okay, and next one we will take because I didn't want to make it too complicated and the, you know, the total you can focus only for an hour. Next one, we can take more arthritis, not osteoarthritis. Okay, now I will not answer anything for homeopathy and others because this is a seminar for the, the <clears throat> medical students. Sir, can we regenerate cartilage? Yes, we can. Uh, that's what stem cell is intend to do but we don't know instruments in my viva book yes yeah they're enough they don't ask too many questions don't worry okay can oa and ra coexist in a patient patient no primary o and primary ra are very uncommon okay don't involve in this okay it's like normal in a bipolar patient no sir in a patient who is suffering from statin induced myalgia with medication okay statin induced myalgia uh Subchondral cyst, no, no, let's not confuse in subchondral cyst and osteomyelitis. Osteomyelitis is different. I will not answer this. Um, statin induced myalgia. No, I, I didn't probably get the question. No, you can use any simple analgesic, let's say tramadol plus paracetamol, a paracetamol. Okay. I am not very sure about your, the, the intention of that question because it's a bit confusing for me. So whatever in Viva book, what instruments we have covered, they are most of the time enough. Right. Any other questions do we have? So here in exam, usually they will ask you why not it is rheumatoid. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, can a lower economic patient be treated by only orthrosis? Yes, you can. But in today's world, when we have the Aishman Yojanas that are coming, people can be offered whatever they want. Medicine, can I take steroid? No steroids to be given for osteoarthritis. Please never say this. Okay. Osteroids are not for osteoarthritis. They are only for rheumatoid. Okay. Uh, any particular exercise for OA? Yes. Brilliant question. Quadriceps strengthening exercise is the, the best exercise. Quadriceps strengthening exercise. Okay. Sir, will you give the idea of chondroprotective agent? I told you chondroitin sulfate and glucosamine, but they have a doubtful value. Okay. People do give. But yes, Shokat says we teach cordyceps. Yes, brilliant Shokat. We teach cordyceps. That is the most important exercise. Role of physios. Oh, physios are so important in osteoarthritis. So basically for strengthening, for, you know, building up the core strength, for mobilization of joint. And you can use the various modalities if you feel that acute exacerbation is there for moist heat, shorter diathermy and others. Okay. So that's the physiotherapist. We do send them to physiotherapy because physiotherapy is the key. Open patella brace or normal knee brace is like getting married or unmarried. I don't know. Yeah, they're all one and same. Okay, don't worry about them. Um, quadriceps strengthening and joint mobilization is must. Yes, Vinay. Yes, correct. Absolutely. So you can keep a question. You can always mail your question to me, Vivek ortho at yahoo.co.in. And okay, what should we answer when asked for differential diagnosis of OA? Okay. Very good question, Sayyid. Please remember, 
differential diagnosis is not mandatory. That is the rule number one in orthopedics. You give differential diagnosis only when you have got certain clinical feature on history and examination, which are not matching with the primary diagnosis. So let us say this patient who says that I have got some stiffness in my hand and my, you know, and my foot also, and the joint looks a bit warm. Number one, I mean, it feels warm. When you take x-ray, you realize that there is a not so much of asymmetry in the joint space reduction. Then you know that it may not be actually the osteoarthritis. There you can say, sir, since patient is relatively younger, he's let's say 45, he's got a little bit of morning stiffness. I would also consider rheumatoid and I will do this investigation. But when you have a standard classic clinical feature of a 62-year-old male coming with a virus deformity, mechanical pain, joint line tenderness, for God's sake, there is no DD. Okay, guys. So with this, we finish this session. Extensile lag due to OA, ho sakta hai, Dibeshri. It can happen. Extensile lag is a common finding, not a problem. Which condition can we go for PRP? Osteoarthritis.